Perfect. I hope it will be very helpful to the community. Um, so let me just introduce you the title. Um, it's Big Brain Data Processing with C Brain and Data Lag. Uh, so I'm Shabazz working at JSC presenting um, this talk and along with me, Morris, Peter, Tristan, Natasha and Brian uh, will be um, like co-presenting in the session and presenting demos. <clears throat> so I'm just, okay. So just to give you an overview of uh, which part of Highball we are, uh, we are actually participating in Work Package 4, which is actually um, doing two, uh, two major things, like step one, like two steps. So workflows and the data access, like data part. So workflow part is actually aimed at integrating pipelines uh, that can run, they can connect CBrain with the resources at JSC. And not only that, uh, these pipelines can also access uh, uh, like the data storage services, which are actually already developed as part of the project. And also state of the art technologies that have been developed in the past. Um, so com coming to the workflows, uh, we actually um, enable these, uh, these pipelines through uh, like in the form of containers that can execute it, that can be executed on uh, supercomputing resources. But not only that, uh, they are running on supercomputing resources, but they can be actually submitted and can be directed through the portal application called a CBrain. And the second part of the workflows is to scale uh, uh, the applications or the applications which has um, deep learning models or deep learning methods through um, uh, on distributed uh, like nodes through, for example, Horowitz that is actually providing distributed TensorFlow or PyTorch, for example. Uh, the data part, uh, the step two, uh, I'm just going back and forth because both are connected and both are being developed uh, in parallel. Uh, the, the data part of the workflows actually, or workflows connecting data, uh, that will exploit the hierarchical memory architectures. Not only that, we also provide the interaction uh, and the enhancement of the IU forwarding that will be used or IU transformations that are actually um, already present in the code base. And uh, after the implementation of, uh, we exploit this um, IU part, we try to connect this with the workflows. So this is actually what you say, uh, what we call is the technical part, development part or implementation part. Uh, the use case uh, scenarios will be uh, reflected through the joint uh, infrastructure integration between uh, Compute Canada or Seabrain uh, at, and the JSC resources. So here we see um, two, like one of our resources like a deepest cluster with the modular supercomputing architecture with different modules. And uh, Natasha will be showing you a demonstration um, that is actually using one of the uh, partitions of this cluster. So then just a short overview of the architecture uh, of the workflows. Um, so on, the, on, on this side, you see uh, that there's a normal CBrain user actually already running Joe's jobs, already managing, already managing computation on Canadian resources. I'm sorry, I just click the mouse. And it runs like, like as it is, like doing without any integration. The right part is our part. Uh, right part is the part of the highball that actually allows the user of the CBrain can uh, utilize the credentials already assigned through like or given by Helmholtz or JSC and using by using these credentials can manage and run pipelines on HPC resources at JSC. So this, there's also this integration actually is also part of the work that actually um, integrates identity uh, between the JSC and also like Yule Supercomputing uh, Center and the Seabrain portal. So this was kind of a work at the security level. So we have done some integration. We'll show you some demonstration like in the like coming slides. So uh, so after which after we have this integration on the deep paste uh, running the pipeline, the other part, the second part of the data is to access the data store, data space. Uh, data led as data source or data sync. So that is actually part that we are already working on and we will see how it will work. And the, the purpose of the session is to, to show 
you as a community that you can also leverage this integration and manage your computations through Seabrain portal um, on JSC resources, if you have already got an allocation, because there are some users who are doing similar kind of pipelines on JSC. I think this is a good opportunity for you that you can um, uh, utilize Seabrain um, and data led to run computations on JSC. Uh, now coming to the tutorial organization. Um, so after me, so this this was like just an introduction of the session. That was my part. Uh, Brian will uh, take over and explain you the NeuroHub and the Seabrain um, infrastructure and ecosystem. And then Natasha will take will describe and will show you the demonstration, the real demonstration integration that we did uh, with the uh, Seabrain and the Deepest by using the Big Brain Warp pipeline. And Tristan will be showing um, the big brain data management data led. So this is uh, now I will uh, ask Brian, please take over. And um, maybe Suzanne, can you um, shift control to Brian so that he can share his screen maybe? He is already co-host, so he should be able to share screen. Okay, great, great, thank you. Sorry about that. I was muted. Can everyone hear me okay and see the title slide? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you, Shabazz. So I'm going to just take a few minutes opening to, as a follow up to what you, uh, Shabazz, was talking about to say a few words about the Seabrain Disparity Computing Platform, and uh, which is part of a, a broader ecosystem called NeuroHub uh, that, that has been developed here out of uh, out of McGill as part of an overall project called Healthy Brains for Healthy Lives. So I'm just going to shift to my next slide. So what I'm going to just quickly mention is that what you're going to see today really is one element of an ecosystem that NeuroHub, uh, funded through this Healthy Brains, Healthy Lives initiative, brings together. It's a really an ecosystem that touches upon a variety of elements touching data storage and accessibility, all through data management and sharing, how to process that data, and then also how to work with that data in an explorative, interactive fashion. So you see this covering this elements of both the data handling, the data processing, but also elements of interoperability. And really there's two fundamental core component trees of NeuroHub that are developed in-house specifically here at McGill. Those being things you might've heard already called Loris and Seabrain. We're gonna focus on the Seabrain side today, but one of the really big elements which is, uh, should be noted as part of NeuroHub is really the interoperability. So there are other elements in the ecosystem that people might be familiar with in terms of the data sharing distribution, such as data lab that you'll hear about from Tristan later on in the session now. So all of the interfaces to bring these elements together is a con fundamental constituent component purpose of NeuroHub. So, and one way of looking at this, rather than say, okay, well, there's all these tools, all these different elements, how do you they bring them together? An analogy I'd like to use in expressing this is if you parallel it, you now, whether you like office type of software as a whole or not, um, really the Office 365 space is essentially the analogy that what we have developed together with NeuroHub and continue to evolve whereas individual tools like Seabrain and Loris are much like the individual applications available within an office space. So that kind of parallels the world that we're describing here but with what we mean by NeuroHub. I'll focus about the Seabrain part. Specifically, Neuro, uh, Seabrain is covering the distributed neuroinformatics platform. So what it really means, if you look at it in the, where it started in the Canadian context uh, in the early two, 2000s uh, going back, it really involves data and compute and really bringing a f easy way to access the data and the compute, but through a web interface and also through a rich API. So what the Seabrain system is letting you do is it provides, again, that very user-friendly web interface. It hides in behind all the complexities of the compute system and at the same time abstracts it away to let users submit jobs using the tools of their choice and tools that are very popular for their individual research areas on those systems and managing the results that come back. So again, this layered approach where you have the web interface, the orchestration engine that happens underneath through the network, but to connect the distributed data and compute systems across the country. And this is not only across the country now, as we can see, it's expanded into an international scope and you'll see how broadly that is uh, in a moment. But what that includes now is not only the ecosystem across Canada, but also compute resources all over the world, including large major facilities in the US, including TAC, the San Diego Supercomputing Center, the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, and across this Exceed ecosystem, 
but also connections into uh, the European side as well. So tying into Surf Sarah, for example, and what you'll see coming in the demonstration into the Eulich side as well. So this brings together again, like I said, distributed compute across the ecosystem. And thus far, our, the main resource that we use, at least in Canada, provides a significant amount of compute hours per year and a significant amount of storage that is accessible to anyone who can connect to the system. If you look at the scope of sites that are actually connected into the Seabrain instances, you can see them in the red dots there. So we have over 190 sites in 32 different countries configuring the resources to be part and accessible through Seabrain. So it's not just the large main HPC facilities that you would see there that are connected. It's connecting lab systems, it's connecting those large systems as well across so that facilitates data sharing, data movement uh, across the entire ecosystem of resources that people may have access to. We support a number of large projects, both nationally and internationally, and we have major collaborations with projects, both, like I said, covering in Canada, but also through the US and in Europe. And you can see our continuing user growth on a year by year basis. One other thing maybe for this particular community, I'd just like to highlight, even though it's, again, you'll see, be able to see this in more detail in, in the slides afterwards, is just the full extent of the tools that are available within Seabrain. Right now, over about 100 plus different tools Following the URL at the link here, you should be able to see exactly which tools, but this kind of just shows you the category of different imaging tools that are available on, on the Seabrain platform. These are all containerized, these are all prepackaged, and we followed the versions so that way we have full traceability of what tools have been run and what input parameters have been selected for your processing. So this covers the full spectrum from analysis, pre-processing for MRI, structural uh, MRI, fMRI processing, EEG, tractography, through the genomics as well. So you can see the full list there. And this is constantly being updated by our team. A key component, and just to put a, a shout out to Tristan and, and his team particularly, who we work with, and uh, from the boutique side, boutiques is a state way of actually providing a standardized schema in JSON for the description of the tools that execute on the platform. We follow this standard for all the tools that are within Seabrain. And this provides an easy way of documenting and making that tool available, not only for the ones that are developed and, and imported in-house by our development team, but also for new researchers to come and import their own tools as well into Seabrain. And lastly, just to highlight uh, one element of the ecosystem I talked about there. Yes, there's the web interface, which really brings, I would say, the ease of entry into the system. And that's what you're going to see from Natasha upcoming through the demonstration here, but also all the elements of accessing the tools, the tasks, and the data handling are also available through the API layer. And one of the key areas that we wanted to maybe uh, to, to actually go through and support is the use of interactive computing. And we already support a number of uh, examples and use cases where people in JupyterHub notebooks can actually take advantage of the full API to do their interactive work in interactive computing. That's a topic for another discussion, but what I'm gonna do next is hand it over to, to Natasha but I encourage you, if you have any questions or you want to see more information about NeuroHub and the Seabrain space, you can see the URL links below. But what we're going to see now is a demonstration, as I said, from Natasha to actually work with the Big Brain data set and launching that in Seabrain with a specific tool that is, I think, particularly relevant for the community here. So over to you, and Natasha. You can hear me, that's fine. And you see uh my sharing right with deep here everybody is okay yes so yes. what yeah okay <laughs> what i will do we create a google collab document that just um, have all the information that we will uh, share with you today uh, i will do a live demo on my side uh, and you will find what i do on the slide deck right here but i will go with a live demo so what I will demonstrate is the ability to run um, Big Brain Warp on C-Brain and Big Brain Warp on Deep on C-Brain, in fact. So first of all, to, to do that, you need to have a C-Brain account. If you don't have one, you can request one uh, on the portal side. Uh, as Brian already mentioned before, we have the list of all the tools. Oh. I apologize, I, I hit the button and I mistakenly stopped your share, Natasha, I apologize. That's fine. So that's okay. You see the list of the tool of Cibrain? Yes. Okay, so wh what I say, it's uh, you can access the list of available tools and data sets in Cibrains. 
some have restricted, rest, restricted access and some are publicly available. So it's a gate for the CNP big brain data set right here. And now I will show you how to launch uh, big brain work on CBrain on Deep because we have uh, the processing part of CBrain that was installed, installed on Deep uh, during this summer, in fact. So we are able to process um, some pipeline on Deep. So first of all, when you lo log into CBrain, you will uh, start from your project page. You have different type of project in CBrain, some share ones that uh, is here for sharing files and data with other uh, CBrain users. You have personal ones that is just for you and you have public projects that allow you to access some public data set like the big brand data set right here. If you go here, you will see that you have a long list of files that is included in the big brand data set. You have the Ming file and the Nifty files. So for example, here I have the full eight uh, 2000 millimeter and you can explore it with um, Brand Browser uh, just done here because Brand Browser is incorporated in CBrain and you able to see what it's inside your files. So here, if I want to launch uh, Big Brain Work, what I need to do is to select two files, in fact. Uh, one will be for uh, the input of Big Brain Work itself. And the other one, in fact, is a free software license since uh, Big Brain Warp requires to have a free, free software license. So uh, first of all, I select my input file right here. And after that, I need to search for my free software license. That, well, so you need to have your free software license uh, registered into CBrain in order to, to launch uh, Big Brain Warp. So you select both of your files, you click on launch, you search for your tools that you want to run. As you can see, I was a little bit fast, but I have access to a wide range of tools. So I know that I want to run Big Brain Warp, I can select it. Then uh, I can run on Deep, since it's on Talent Deep, it's a version of that is from June. So here it is. What I need to do right here is to select some parameter. First of all, uh, where I want to store my result back. So we have some uh, storage here at McGill, for example, main store. So I want to store it in main store. And after that, you just have to select the input parameters that you normally uh, pass to Big Brand Work uh, with the command line. So I need to enter my in space that I know that is Big Brand Sim. I need, uh, that is ICBM. I need to uh, fill my output space, my free software license, since I need one to run Big Brain Work. My input volume is my input that came from Big Brain, so this one. And then my interpolation that is right here. And I just have to click uh, Start. So it's more easy than not more easy, but you don't have to install the big run work on your side. You can use the resource of CBrain and you can launch just by user interface. So you see that I have uh, four, four tags, five tags that is called big run work. The one that I just launched right now that is here and four that I already launched last week uh, for the demo purpose. So here, if I refresh, you will see that it's on new and it will go, it, it will go into a cycle that go from new to queued uh, that is queued on uh, ULIC uh, computer centers. After that, it will go on CPU and then completed when the task just finished. So I can go and explore a little bit the task itself. So you see that uh, you can see that we have the parameters that is registered right here, the input file that is registered here. You have the output file that will appear here when the task is finished. Then you have some processing logs that just log everything that happened in CBrain site. It's for um, recording purpose. And when you came back after that, you can always see what's happened. So I will go back to my task and just, you see now it's setting up. I will go into my 
the task I launched last week just to show you what's happened. So here you will see that it's completed. As you can see, I have uh, my big brand result that is right here. I already opened it here. So you will you see that uh, Big Brand Work just generate one folder with these two files. One is the input data set, and the other one is the output uh, output file. Here, when I click on this one, you will see that it's appear uh, right here. It's a result of the Big Brand Work um, pipeline, in fact. So you can explore your re result directly in CBrains. Um, that's when you run one task. One other stuff that is really interesting in Seabrain is like you can run multiple tasks at, at once uh, because if you want to run on 100 tasks on 100 uh, input file, you will not select once at a time and just make the process every time. So uh, as you can see, it's queued right now uh, in your league center. So I will show you how to launch uh, with multiple input files. So what I need in this case, it's not to select one file. It's I will go into um, the big brand data set. I will create a C brand file list, in fact. So a C brand was file list, it's simply a list of files. It's like a CSV files that contain multiple inputs. So for example, I, I select one, two, three uh, inputs just for the purpose of the demo. Then I click on more. Here I create a file list right here. You will see that I generate a file that contain information about the file itself, the ID uh, of the file into the Cbrain database, the name of the file, the size, the data provider and so on. It's just for internal purpose of Cbrain. I just want to edit the name uh, just to be able to find it more easily after that. So um, I will say big brain demo. I update. If I go back to my files, all. I can select uh, the file I just created just before. So here it is. Once again, I deselect my license before, so I will go back to find my, li my license. Here, and then like before, I search for big brand work, select the tools, launch it, select the data providers, same parameter right here. Um, here and here, for example, my free software license. But here, instead of my single file, I will select my CBCSV files that contain my three input files, the information about my three input files. And then I will start um, the pipeline and you see that now I have an entry that say I launched three big brand work. And if I just um, explode what I have inside, you see that I have three uh, tasks that start at the same time, 11, uh, 55, 54. And you can explore um, your task here. So here it is. And as I said before, I already ran it last week. So you will have the same information here with the output of every single task you run that is uh, recorded for every single input files. Here you have some information. As I said, you can see that it was processed at which time on uh, which bureau and so on. You have some resource usage history and you can see the standard output and the standard error of your task. Uh, everything is run uh, via Cbrain. We use Boutique to, to incorporate the tool and uh, we use Singularity to, to launch it uh, on your uh, computer center. Um, I think I have said everything I said I've said. If you have any question, feel free to ask. Uh, I will go and give the, um, and give the sharing to, 
to Tristan for the data lab part uh, of the demo. Okay, thank you, Natasha. Um, I will take over screen sharing now. You should now see my screen. Okay. Yes. So, all right. So, in this part of the in this part of the demo, we we are going to focus on data management. Um, so, data management is obviously a large topic. Uh, what we are trying to do here is to create a common space to record the data sets which are produced or derived from the big brain data set. Um, so this is this is uh, related to the or this is consistent with uh, the goals of the Canadian Open Your Science platform. And I'd like to start this presentation by showing you this interface. So that's the interface, the web interface of the Canadian Open Your Science Platform, or CONP. Um, in the past month, uh, maybe some of you attended our session in the winter. So in the past month, we've worked um, quite seriously on integrating more big brain data sets in this portal. So you can now see uh, 13, 13 data sets are integrated, uh, some of them being available in CBrain for direct processing. Um, some of them being only uh, accessible for download or local processing. And um, you can see two things here. The first one is that um, we track, and I will say more about that later, but we track dependencies on, on data sets, on, on, uh, between data sets. So for instance, we know that the, uh, this data set here, 3D surfaces, um, was derived from another big brain data set, and we can get more information about this derivation. Um, and the second thing is that, uh, so the portal also provides a central place to download uh, the data, either directly for the smaller data sets or through a command line interface for the larger data sets. Okay, so, Okay, if we're going back here, so the web interface is nice if you want to explore things, you know, if you want to download a few, um, you know, a few data sets or show it around. Um, but if you're here today, that means that, you know, probably you're interested by actually downloading the data, processing it, and you know that not everything can be done through a web interface. So that's why we've also, we're also taking care of providing consistent and uh, uniform command line interfaces to access this data. And we do that through a tool which we are using, which is called uh, Data Lab. Um, so all the, all the data sets that you can see in the CUNP portal are actually integrated in Data Lab as a set of data, data sets. So, um, what this allows to do, so I'm going now to go through some steps in this notebook. So the first one is not really interesting. You can look it for yourself. It's about software in installation, though it's required and convenient. Um, so what you, you see here is that, um, so using DataLab, we can actually install uh, the CONP data sets that includes um, uh, the, the big brain data sets that I was referring to before. And what you can see is that data set installation is actually quite fast. So we don't, um, this doesn't need to, it doesn't require downloading, actually downloading the data. So here we just have a set of pointers to the actual files. And this is interesting for two reasons. The first one is that, as you've seen, we can install the data set locally without having to actually download the data. And the second one is that uh, as a platform, we don't have to host all the data. So some of these data, some of the data sets I've shown are hosted in the, uh, the Big Brain FTP server that maybe some of you know, uh, hosted at, at McGill, but other data sets uh, derived from these ones are hosted in Toronto, in Alican's group, uh, and, and could be anywhere else on the internet. So that's really a place, you know, uh, we don't have to centrally transfer and host all the data. 
So in particular, if you have data derived from the big brain that you would like us to host and reference, then uh, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to do so. So back to the, uh, to the command line. So once we have installed the data set, uh, we can actually see uh, all the projects available in this data set. So there are a few big brain data sets and there's a few other things too. Uh, we can now focus on a particular uh, data set and install it specifically uh, using Datalad. And once a specific data set was installed, we can also see uh, the particular files which are uh, in this data set. Um, so if you were going to try and open these files, um, you would rapidly realize that they don't contain any data, they are just symbolic links. Um, and that's the whole point, you know, we can just list the files without having to download them. Um, but of course, um, so that's another example here where, you know, we walk through the data set and see the different files which are available. Uh, you can of course explore it further for yourself. All these data sets are documented in the CNP portal. Um, and But of course, uh, chances are high at some point that you would actually like to access the data itself. And uh, you can also do that through datalad, so using a similar command than this one, datalad get. And so that takes a little bit more time, of course, because this time we are actually downloading some data. Um, and you can see that, so that's also, you know, this model is also useful if you're going to use uh, perhaps an HPC cluster, which is not connected to Seabrain, uh, or your own cloud or whatever infrastructure, you can download the data directly there uh, through the same mechanism. And um, through that, you know, this is just to illustrate that the data was actually downloaded. Um, if that wants to work, yeah. So we actually retrieved like one block of the uh, of the big brain data at uh, I believe 40 microns here, microns here. Um, so again, I, I guess my main message, you know, beyond the uh, the infrastructure that is possible to access the data, is that um, this will be increasingly useful as you know people contribute their own data sets. So if you're doing anything interesting with the big brain, um, feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to integrate your data set. So Natasha, uh, moving on to the next part of this tutorial. So Natasha pr uh, previously presented a way to process the data uh, through Seabrain, uh, which is good. You know, uh, once you have a, um, a fully working pipeline and you don't want to bother with the uh, your infrastructure details. As Brian was mentioning in his introduction, um, some tools in Seabrain are integrating using integrated using the boutiques framework, which allows, uh, which provides a consistent set of containerized tools. And by containerized, we mean uh, accessible through Docker or Singularity, meaning that essentially you can install Docker on your system or Singularity, and then you don't have to bother with any extra software installation. So again, if you want to know more about uh, boutiques, um, then you can follow these links and there's extensive documentation there. What I would like to show you now is how we can use boutiques pipeline to process uh, the big brain data set, uh, which is exactly what Seabrain does in the backend. And I'm going to show it uh, manually here. Um, so first of all, what's a, what's a boutique tool? It's a, as I said before, a container plus uh, some metadata that explains uh, how a particular pipeline can be, uh, can be executed, can be invoked. Uh, so you can see here the typical information that would be in a boutique descriptor is what would be in the manual page, the man page of, uh, of a tool. And uh, that's what we created to uh, integrate the big brain war pipeline in Seabrain. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in um, uh, processing data, uh, first of all, you may be interested by listing available tools. And so there is a search command in, um, in boutiques that's, you know, uh, similar to Docker search, if you've used that, um, that allows you to, you know, list 
tools available already uh, pre-packaged. So a subset of these tools are available in CBrain. So let's say now that we want to focus on FSL, we can do, uh, uh, it's pretty slow today. I think my internet may be a bit um, struggling, but anyway, so you can restrict your search to specific F FSL tools, um, use exact match in case you don't want to approximate, uh, that sort of things. Uh, so once you've searched um, among existing tools, uh, you will probably identify one tool of interest. So in this case, uh, for the sake of this tutorial, uh, we selected FSL stats, uh, which has one, uh, you know, and uh, we retrieved its identifier. All the tools, by the way, are tracked on the Zenodo Research Archive, registered and, and stored there, uh, which means that they have um, a DOI, a digital object identifier. So they'll be here permanently, um, uh, you know, as, uh, as an ensured by, uh, by Zenodo. So once we've retrieved the identifier of a tool, we can get an example of a typical uh, input data for this tool. Uh, we like to work from examples and that's always easier. And then, you know, you would fill in the, uh, these parameters according to whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you can have a more detailed example if you want uh, all the available parameters. And um, and um, yeah, and then so fill in your parameters and, uh, and uh, run the tool. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that blocks that we downloaded before from the big brain and compute the histogram of this block. And uh, be because we want to register or derive data to data lab, potentially to register it in CUNP or any other place uh, in a subsequent step, we are first going to create a, data, a new data set uh, that will contain the result of our processing. Once this is done, um, we fill in the parameters to compute our histogram. Here, you know, we specify our input file, which is what we've downloaded before, and we specify that we'd like to have 10 bins in our histogram. And once our parameters are, are set, um, we can actually run the tool. So you can note here that this didn't require any installation of FSL, for instance. Um, if you've been through that, you know that it can be a bit cumbersome sometimes. Uh, so we're just running FSL through um, its containerized version, and um, and that's quite easier. Um, so you know the tools. This is a typical output from uh, boutiques. The tool executed successfully. Here we can see the histogram there, and we can of course um, display it. You know. As, um, as we want later on. Okay, um, so to close the loop now, um, so we've, we've processed a block of the, of the big brain data sets and we may want actually to, um, to register you know, and publish these data sets uh, back to some um, open, ar open archives. So what we're going to do here is that we are going to push our data set, not to CUNP, that's a feature we'd like to support in the future, but to the Open Science Framework, which is um, another research archive that uh, you may be aware of, um, and which is um, increasingly required you know, to publish data sets and even in other papers as well. Uh, so the first thing we can do is to save our data sets. So we've created a new file, a histogram, now we're just saving it. Um, and in the next step, uh, we are going now to push this data set to OSF. So that requires a uh, token, which I'm going to put here. Um, it's this token is associated with my account. Um, and so you would have to create yourself a, a you know an account on OSF, of course, to push data there. Um, which is straightforward to do. Um, and so knowing that, assuming that this was done before, um, we're using here the data.osf backend, which is uh, quite recent. 
and the result of this operation creates a data set. Here you can see uh, it has the right name. It was just created now. Um, and so that's a data set which is publicly available on the OSF uh, that doesn't have a DOI yet, but you could easily get a DOI for it um, with just a, a mouse click. Uh, our files are not yet uh, pushed to this data set, so that's another operation uh, that we are doing here. And So that takes a few seconds. Okay, and it's pushing now the, the histogram itself. It's pushing the boutiques invocation file, and there we go. And if I refresh here, I can see that uh, some files, the files that I just created, um, from the big brain data were uploaded to the data set here and now now you know available for anyone to use and uh, uh, share okay so that's what i wanted to show today so as a small recap um, i've shown how big brain data is available in a data lab data set through the canadian open your science platform and i've shown how it can be processed using boutiques using containerized tools um, and how the derived data can be pushed to the open science framework. Um, and just to conclude, the logic of this infrastructure development is really to serve different user profiles, whether you like to access data and tools through a web interface. In that case, there is CBrain, there is CONP, or directly from a command line interface, perhaps to integrate it in your own tools. And in that case, there's the data lab and boutiques client that I've just demonstrated. So again, if you have derived data or processing tools that you'd like us to uh, integrate in this infrastructure, feel free to reach out to us. I guess that concludes the session and we'd be happy to take any question for the remaining minutes. Thank you.